Now, you may already be aware of some cultural differences between countries and how it can be difficult to overcome those differences. However, as I'm not an expert, allow me to introduce you to Roger, who specializes in helping people um, with their challenges, moving to a different country, and with particular emphasis on the UK and on France. Please welcome to the stage for the speech entitled, How to Navigate Across Cultures, it's Roger. Woo! Can you just imagine that tomorrow, we all, everyone in this room will have to move to, not the UK, not France, Alaska. <laughs> that will be quite a shock. The first neighbor may be miles away. You might have to go on your snowmobile <laughs> and go along uh, across frozen lands for miles and miles because you can see a human face. It will be quite uneven, a bit like our roads in the UK. So that will be a culture shock. So how do we adapt to changes? Manu, we don't have to go very far for a lot of differences between countries. So even though the UK and France are geographically quite close, there is only a channel separating us. You call it the English Channel? We just call it the Channel. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a sea of differences. So how do we adapt to, to those changes? I would like to, so I've been thinking, how do we do it? So we listen, we observe, and learn. So that's my LOL system, my LOL tips, my three tips. So, the, um, there is, in, the, in, in this room, there is more diversity amongst all the individuals here, then there are differences between cultures. So a culture, Pellegrino, gives a definition as follows. It's a set of behavior that are accepted and familiar. So what's accepted and familiar in one country or in a culture is not necessarily what's accepted and familiar in another. So for example, one of the first things we think about when about the, the UK is about queuing, queuing up. <laughs> we all very um, disciplined about that. One person there, <laughs> and there, and there, there, and another one here. In France, I believe some of you may have been to France, maybe, any? Yeah. yeah. The, we have a slightly different approach <laughs> to curing. So interestingly, so if I have not been observing that and listening, then I will be doing it the French way. And I think I probably may be seen as being rude, I don't know. So the other day, I was happily going shopping, pushing my trolley to that checkout was what was free. And then on my right hand side, a lady about my age, 21. <laughs> she was going to go on, on the checkout I was going to. Interestingly, we both stopped at the same time. Please go, please go. <laughs> that could have lasted about five minutes. <laughs> anyway, in the end, she let me go. Then I went to check out. Then I've been thinking, that situation in France probably may have been a bit different. I would, sorry. What are you doing? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but if we don't know about these things, I mean, it might look insignificant 
but it's not that significant. It's part of the way we behave. It's part of a set of cultures, a set of things we do. Now, but because there are more, there is more diversity amongst individuals than cultures, we tend to stereotype people. Be honest, I would like to ask you a question. When you think about a French person, what comes to your mind? Onions. Pardon? Onions. Baguette? Onions. What else? Onions. Onions. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, frog legs. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll have to make a confession. I had frog legs once. <laughs> it tastes like chicken. <laughs> now, can you imagine yourself? Can you see a frog on your plate? Would you eat that? No. But you could easily in see a chicken. So it's all about perception. Then again, it is quite insignificant. Well, it appears to be insignificant. But it's part of how we behave. Because this culture does give us like, um, we behave because it's familiar and because it's accepted. To come back briefly to the queuing, uh, to queuing, now to me, it has become accepted. I have accepted how people behave. I have accepted how they do things. And it has become familiar and part of how I do it. And I just, it's become part of my second nature. I just forgot about it. It's, it's just there. In terms of, so, it's about listening. How do we listen? So we listen. We need to be interested. We need to be curious about the other culture. We need to be willing to be curious and to understand other people. Maybe sometimes we don't have to go that far across countries, maybe across regions. There are a lot of differences. And we need to observe and take notice of what's going around us. Because if we don't, we could end up with quite a big problem. And we learn from that. Should we be willing to do so? But to me, this LOL goes a bit further than that. So that big O in the middle, if you fold it in half, what does that become? A big C. A big C. And for me, C stands for connection. We need to connect. Because in, this, in, in those days, we tend to lose a bit of that connection. We tend to lose this human interaction because we interact, interact too much, I think, with <coughs> mobiles and other things. So we need to find that. So it's all about connection. So how do I, what do I do? I do language teaching and coaching because there is a way to learn it quicker than you may think. And some of you in here, I'm sure, know more than one language. And has also, I'm offering how to learn survival French and English in four weeks because you need to survive whatever you want to do over there. One thing I can give you a tip if you want to go to France or if you haven't been yet, if you try to speak French, people will love you for it and you will see. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter at all. Don't worry about the level of the, of the standard you need to have. Okay, if, if you do it, then you'll see there will be uh, doors of opportunity. Socially, people will include you in your circle of friends very quickly. And business-wise too. I would like to finish with a quote from Nelson Mandela, which I think could encompass everything. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that will go to his head. If we talk to him in his language, that will go to his heart. Thank you. <laughs>